And that's why I can never use the microwave ever again. I, I don't know. I'm just. Yeah, yeah, that was a big mess. Yeah, it was. You're absolutely the worst. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the second episode of Totally True Tales to Tell Together, the Improv Storytelling Podcast. I'm your host Carson Harris, along with my co-host Alex and Sarah. Say hello. 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 And uh, today it has been decided that Alex will be telling us a story. I was glad to get mad at me because it sucks. <laughs> Alex, what story are you telling us today? I know the story of how hard it is to pick up a piece of paper. Um, hmm. It was about, you know, you guys know, it's the story of how I started my own country. Like, you guys have all heard this story. Like, yeah, but you, you tell it so well. I know, know, but like, I feel like this has gotten st- like, All of all the knows. other people around the fire here listening with us have not heard it. Of course, of course. So, as as we all know, I am the dictator of my own country that I have started. So it, this all started back like I was going to college and like I was it was real boring. People that I was going to school with were kind of. I was not sorry. I know that I'm not supposed to swear, but like as a dictator of my own country, uh, I swear all the time. So I will do my best to not do that again. Sorry to the editor. <laughs> anyway, they were just kind of jerks. And like, so I decided that, you know, I was going to, I was going to leave college and go do that. But then obviously the job market was terrible. So I just, went, you know what, I'm going to be an explorer and try and go find something new and make that the way that I, that I build my livelihood and my future. Sure. You're building on the experiences of many other explorers in history, setting out on your own. You know, my heroes, Christopher Columbus. Uh, General Custer, you know, you know, great heroes of the <laughs> Um So I went off into the into the wilderness, uh, down in South America. Now, were you prepared for that? Like, did you pack? Did you? No, because I'm dope as hell. I didn't think I needed anything. Obviously, that what was wrong. Obviously, but at the time, I was a at a I was a very rash college kid who was just like, you know what, I'm going into the woods with a large knife and some water, and obviously I'm going to be fine. Did your matches run out anyway? Now that seemed unnecessary. <laughs> okay, so I, 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 went, I there's a lot of junk build down in the Amazon, so I was like, I'm going to go and like try and find anything. The uh, lost city of gold. Of course, of course. So I went down searching there it was horrific. I obviously I went into the Amazon with a knife and water and nothing else, and clearly that went. So I was kind of lost in the jungle for a while, and then eventually was like kind of delirious and came across some guy's boat. And so like I get on this, I steal this boat. I'm like, oh, this has food and whatnot. If I steal this boat and get into national waters, it's my boat. So it just like had to keep. Uh, no, I, I had learned how to hotwire as a small child, so I... That's another it, it obviously is, but, like, that's not the story I'm telling you now, so a story for another time. But okay. so I so I hotwire this boat, um, I get it going down the Amazon, I end up out in the open ocean. We're just going along for a little while, and eventually I happen across, like, this large, apparently unforeseen island in the south of it. South of South Atlantic is the word that Yeah, that would probably be. Um, so I get on there and like I just go walking around for a bit, thinking, "Oh, I just found an empty island. Woo! I'm gonna die on an empty island." And then I just heard a bunch of noise, so I come into this clearing, and there's just a ton of people. There's like these. There are a bunch of small people that have apparently come to live on this island. Were they actual people, or were they coconuts? They were not coconut. These are real. How dare you talk about my subjects this way? You've met them. You know Dave. <laughs> Come on. But so we were. I wander into this area, and like suddenly, like everybody stops in this town square that they have going on here, and like looks at me, and they're just like, "Oh, well, this is going to go poorly." They they clearly are all going to think I'm some sort of weirdo 
attacker who they now have to beat up and kill. Now, so these are like like hunter gatherer level, or is it more advanced? Than like, a, like a more medieval type thing. Like they had fire and like tools and stuff, but they didn't have like electricity. So like there was a bunch of guys and like cart. They had, they had like these large birds. That they were having full carts instead of horses. Oh. Yeah. Well, like, they were flightless birds, so like they couldn't go anywhere. But like well, they could walk though. Of course. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. They mm-hmm. have a pulling cart. That's why they don't haven't gone anywhere else for anyone to see them. They were large flightless birds at the side. Okay. Yep. But so, so then obviously I'm going around. I walk in and I'm well, they're going to attack me. But it turns out because I was so much larger than them, they actually found me to be some sort of god of sorts that they felt. I looked like their their deity in some way. So these these three dudes come walking up to me and they're like. Oh, you can follow us, follow us. Obviously, I couldn't understand them at the time. Because right. they didn't speak English. They you spoke barely. their... Well, that's hurtful. But they spoke their islander language that I have gradually come to understand. So they lead me to this palace that's up on up on a hill. It's all very fancy and gold-like. Yeah, like like adorned with gold? Kind of like... It looked like gold. I'm fairly certain it was bronze. They like shined really well because okay. they wanted to look cool. But like and like architecturally, like like is this like a palace in the sense of like it's a palace in the sense of it was the size of a normal house, whereas the rest of them were the size of like doll houses. Okay, yep. Yeah. Okay. So like it was very it was very large by comparison to the rest of it. So okay. these people are very tiny. Like you would say the size of coconut. Again, you've met Dave. You know that they are not coconuts. They're about two and a half to three feet tall. Was Tom Hanks anywhere around? No, Tom Hanks was nowhere <laughs> nearby this island. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so I meet their leader, and he's very cordial, and we talk, we talk back and forth. And eventually, through this, and they're showing me what appear to be religious texts, and like these pictures of like. A deity that looked like a tall, large guy with a beard. They're like, oh, they, they think I'm this guy. Right. And so I sort of kind of took advantage of that fact and then uh, gradually worked my way in to become their leader. You, so you are the C3PO to their ego. Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah. So I, I became the leader of this, this, uh, this island nation. Now. And so as. I began to learn their language and learn their customs. I began to find that, find out there were more than one of these small island these islands in this general area, with a large population of people that have been living entirely unknown to the rest of the world. So, is, so this is just like some spot in the Atlantic that had just never been explored, basically. Yes, like, it must have been like just off trade, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. It was kind of just in the it was in the middle of all of the, of the how was that called the triangle of stuff yeah. where everybody was going the triangle. no not the Bermuda oh. the, the triangle of stuff I the, think the trade did. routes from oh, back okay. in the day yeah. when it was like the triangle trade or whatever yeah. that it was in the middle so like no one really ever ran into it if they did they probably didn't make it back to it okay. so I yes but so I gradually start to have them take me to these other other islands and we begin to they had originally been like warring with each other and like having their own individual internal conflicts however now that they did all have the same religion so okay. and therefore I, they were all then unified under the fact that ooh their deity has now come right. to to lead them into the future um so they all started the group together and then so we began to build their society up. They took some of the information, some of the technology that came on this on this boat that I had brought and the various things that I had on me and started to try and improve their society and use some of the knowledge that I had from back in, from back home and gradually started to help them improve things. Right. And to try and like advance obviously it's not the most advanced society because like I'm not a genius. Mm-hmm. But like they're moving right along, and like we've right. gradually built up this this small island country. Um, we haven't attacked anyone yet to try and take over, but like it's been 10, 15 years now, and like we've built up 
a great nation of of small people in the middle of the ocean. Now, have you, like, did you ever consider exposing this civilization to the rest of the world? Like, have you have you gone out and said, "Here we are. Please welcome us into your society." No, I have not. And here, here I can tell you why that is. It's because I discovered in one of, in a couple of the interior islands. Now, this has to stay here. This is at this campfire. I right. stay entirely secret. Everything stays here. You can't, listeners. I know you're going to want to. You can't tell anyone about this. Uh, there were large oil reserves on like multiple of the interior islands, and like the second, I, I was like, oh, this is when we get big enough. Ooh, this is going to be. We're going to make us big time. Yeah. But for right now, like, can't tell anyone about that right. because the second like anyone knew that like my, my little island country had those. They're coming after us to try and take our oil. Like, we oh, can't. Yeah. We can't. We can't have that. Yeah. So, like, we're working on building up our military and like our abil- like our ability to defend our islands. Be careful. <laughs> now, <laughs> my friend Dave is gonna. <laughs> now, what? Like, how? Advanced... He's very small but mighty. How advanced is the weaponry? That like. Oh, right now it's. They're they're moving. We haven't quite gotten to guns yet. But like they've got some dope swords, okay. and like some some shields and stuff. Like it's like I said, it was medieval before, so they had begun some metalworking. They had like bows and arrows and swords and stuff. We haven't quite been able to master, figure out gunpowder yet, because I didn't know it when I left. So like that's part of why I'm back, back here is to try and get some more tech and like research some things to bring back. Okay. Be like, hey guys, this this is how we do some of this, and like, possibly kidnap a couple of scientists to try and help us with our nuclear program. But like, that's that's a long ways off. We aren't we aren't quite there yet. Now, so you are like the unilateral, unilateral leader. I, I am, I am the final word. But we we did. I did. I was not so arrogant to think that I knew these people and their their morals and their society so well that I should be the only one. So there is like an advisory committee that is elected by the people. Like there's one person from each island. Of course, my buddy Dave is like he was, he was the first guy I met and he's like sick as hell. So like right, he had right. he he's totally up high in the government now. Some people say that's uh not cool. Nepotism, but like I don't care. Something you'd like to say? Mm. But no, so we're we're gradually working on improving our systems and improving our country so that when we do decide to uh, ex- to come forward and try and join the world stage, that like we are able to be a world power and like really really hold our own as opposed to just becoming some sort of like coming out to the world and then becoming a, some sort of colony or vassal state to some larger entity. Now, so, like, what is this island like? Like, like, what do they eat? You know, like, is it, like, seafood-based kind of stuff? Is it... It's, I mean, it's your traditional island stuff. They, as you, Yes, they do eat coconuts because it's a good source of protein and liquid. Sarah. <laughs> but then they also they eat a lot of seafood because they are, they are based on the ocean. Um... There are a few kind of, like I said, there was a lot of islands, so there was a couple that were just more empty that we've begun to use for more agricultural okay. yeah. locationing. So, like, it's not, we're not like growing fields of corn, but, like, we're able to grow a couple more plants and stuff to, like, round out the diet and farm some, some of the local animals. Like, I mean, unfortunately, we do have to, there are some arms of the large birds that that are a good protein source as they are one of the large fauna on the on the plant wow. on the on the islands. Um there were also some cow esque creatures that oh, Sarah's more upset about the cows and she is about the people Well um, you gotta you gotta do what you have to do to survive. I love but cows. Yes. But yes, so there some some livestock production as well. Um Mainly because if we're going to be focusing so hard on these, these other elements of improving the society, we couldn't spend so as much time as they were previously hunting and gathering. Right, right. 
So that, that's been the main, like, they were obviously moving out of that already, but I've sped them along out of the hunting and gathering phase, or at least the significant hunting phase of their, yeah. their development. And, like, we're moving right along. It's been great. Well, I hope that everything goes well for your country there. Yeah. Now, now, Carson's had a lot of questions, but Sarah, do you have questions about this this country that I have have created? Um, have Have you taken an interest in anyone in this in this country? No, I've been very busy attempting. Oh, you've to, been busy. Yes, I've been busy trying to improve this country and like build up build up their society and whatnot. I do not Got have it. I do not have time for these kinds of affairs. Got it. While I've been building up. You know, mm-hmm. plus I had like this girlfriend back home when I left, and yeah. like I assume I assume we're still good. We never technically broke up. I think they just probably think I died at sea, but like you know, but she, but, or like a tiger got me. In, but I assume that she's like still at home, like being paid no for uh, Yeah, she's clearly not going to get with anybody. Like they couldn't ever possibly compare. So yeah. like that she's probably just at home being sad is my assumption. I'm assuming. Of course. Any, anything else? Are there, do they have any pets? Any fuzzy cows or? No, no, we. Little cats? We've made sure that no one gets very attached to the cows because oh. they are a food source. Wow. And we wouldn't want people getting super attached to them. Now, there is some small dogs that have become, small and larger dogs that have become uh, pets in terms of like protecting livestock and whatnot. However, we did make sure to not have anyone start trying to befriend cats because all the cats on the island were very large and it had become ingrained in the people that the the young people who went, who found the cats to be cute and attempted to befriend them, almost all immediately were eaten. Wow. So they, it became kind of ingrained in their society not to trust cats. Like, they, they fear them. The the cats are, like, their main fear. Mm. So, like, we leave the cats some food out on the outskirts of various places to try and, like, appease to try and appease them. Because they're God. No, because if they aren't hungry, they won't try and eat my people. But no, so we we attempt to feed the cats to, like, keep them at bay. Mm. But at some point, we hope to try and harness their power militarily. Do they have access to the internet now? Uh, no, that's part of why I'm here. I had to do my research on the internet. Got it. So they, they don't have like TikTok or, or Tinder? In fact, they do not have either of those things. Got it. Well, they do have a form of Tinder, which is just like some people paint like their picture on some wooden slabs and like they slide them one way or the other to like determine if they're into some people. They've become a very efficient society. But yeah. like, it's. They also have like a version of Bumble where like the women do that first, but like that one hasn't really caught on as much. We'll come visit you one day. Yeah, we're all come visit you when we take over the world. Is the weather nice? Like, is it tropical? Yeah, I mean it's fairly nice. It's the South Atlantic, so it gets a little stormy. Okay. There are the occasionally like some some like the penguins that come up to like the bottom of Argentina will occasionally come up to us. So, like, we do get some penguins sometimes, and that's fine. Yeah. But, like, for the most part, it's a little stormy. It's a little it's a little chilly in the winter. But, like, it's also tropical and stuff. It's about the perfect balance there. Nice. Well, anyway, it sounds like you've got a real good deal going on there, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been real great, you know? Just, just leading my people. And, you know, eventually I'll have to figure out, like, what I'm going to do as I get older. But, like, i got plenty of time. Yeah. Well, hopefully... When you do decide to shout out to the world, hey, we're here, hopefully the UN is willing to accept you as a country. I know a lot of times they people will try to start their own country and the UN's like, not. Nah. Yeah, but Carson, I feel like we all know oil talks. Yeah. And I feel like if I'm willing to be an ally with them and I have plenty of oil reserves, they're going to be like, oh, we don't have to rely on the Middle East anymore for this. And like, this dude's friendly and like, the people are small and fun. Absolutely, we can be part of the U.S. And you can even get a World Cup. See, I don't quite think so. I feel like we'd be real bad in the air. Like, our header game would be just, like, 
real poor. Well, and just like they would, teams would just like cross in on us all the time. We would probably be better, better suited at like a, a water polo kind of a sport because they've been like they've like grown up in the water. It, right. seems, it seems like more their game, or like golf probably. Um, wrestling. They're, they have real good leverage. That would be. That might be the one. Yeah, they could probably do well in the Olympics there. Yeah. Like gymnastics. Yeah. Yeah, they both center gravity. They really get those flips in. Oh, so of course. Yeah. And like, not a lot of body weight, so you can. Do, it's there's a lot of things they can do that I just don't think soccer is one of them. Well, uh, that sounds great. Uh, let me know when you go back down. I'll have to visit. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For you, there will always be a room available. You probably shouldn't come. You've insulted Dave too much. He's, he's... I want to meet the cat. Sure, you can come meet the killer cat. Thank you. Well, I think that uh, I think that's about time to put the fire out. Um, thank you for listening again. Uh, again, you can find the podcast on Google Podcasts, Spotify. It'll be up on YouTube. Uh, you can visit the website, t6pod.com, as always to all of that as well as a section where you can submit your own prompts if you want to hear our story you want to hear us tell that you can submit your prompt and maybe you'll hear it on a future episode yeah. but uh, for that thank you very much thank you, thank you.